I believe there are three things that are going to be the determinants of your progress, your growth, what you do in your career, and ultimately what you do in your life. Because I don't see any distinction. There is only life. There's no work-life balance. That's a complete misnomer. I've always been against that ideology. I think we can try and think about integrating our work into our life. And I want you to know that there are only three things. So stick around, and we're going to go through those three things right now. The first thing you need to do if you want to step into career growth and career progress more than anything else that anybody else will tell you is you've got to take off the mask. You've got to start thinking about the egoic behavior that you have. And I'm not doing that to say negatively. The ego is really good for keeping us safe and secure. It's what teaches us to survive. And it's a vital skill that we, we have that ego. But sometimes that ego can take us too far. We put on a mask and we behave as somebody else. So you, ever, you ever ask this? People used to say this to me. James, you're, you're a different person at work than you are at home. You know, at home, I was the joker, light energy. But yet when I was in the office, people said, you're, you're quite serious. You're quite intense. And I felt that. And I remember going back 10, 15 years now and looking back at that intense individual. Yeah, I put on the mask. I had a mask when I went into the office. And so I wasn't really doing the first thing. And the first thing we have to do is take that mask off and be ourselves. And I had to learn this task the hard way. So the, my career took off, by the way, when I did this, when I started to let go of the egoic behavior, the power hungry behavior, the prestige, the chase for titles and the chase for money and salary. You know, when you go after those things, it, it's OK, but it's very egoic and it's rooted in pride and pride is rooted in old negative consciousness states you know so you you kind of have shame and guilt and anger and hurt and things like that fueling you so you tend to force your career a little bit more and you and you are literally saying to people out loud you know i, I did this i just want to get promoted to the next level and then you ask why you know why do you want the title of director senior director vice president why do you want to be a c-suite executive why do you want that and most people, when asked that question, cannot answer it with a satisfactory answer because actually what they really want is just the status. And then with that, I just want more money. It's like, okay, well, what are you doing with your money right now? You know, we know statistically that you can earn fifteen to $20,000 for your entire career and still retire a millionaire, yet we still want more money. Why do we want that money? For status. So we can buy the shiny things, so we can keep up with the neighbors, with you know, double garages and dining rooms that we don't use. You know, we even changed the layout of our house so we could use more of the house that we actually were paying for. It's like, we're paying for this house. You know, we, we don't own it, but we borrow it from the bank. Let's change the layout so we actually make more use of the space that we've got. And I think this would be a good thing for you to think about. But this is number one. We've got to start being ourselves. And the only way we can do that is take money as your number one success criteria and just move it down. I don't mind it being in your top five. But I would love for you to start thinking about when you are at your absolute best, and I know you because I have conversations with people just like you every single week, those conversations never revolve around money. You know, I can work with a client for six weeks, 10 weeks, three months, and they'll never even mention their salary, their bonus. Uh, we won't even talk about money ever because that's not what drives them. They're dri driven by different core values. Most of my clients are driven by love, family, freedom advocacy impact support community this is what people actually want they want that belonging you know so i spend most of my time encouraging them to move into spaces where they can have that core value as part of their career but the only way you do it is when you become you and for my case i had to kind of drop that so it was very difficult to deal with something like when you suddenly wake up and for me it was kind of about a decade ago starting to get executive level coaching that was helping me to start to peel back the layers of why am I getting so much resistance? And that resistance was coming because I was forcing my career. In other words, I was doing all of the actions and all the things that were asked of me, but I wasn't doing it as me. I was doing it as somebody who I thought somebody else wanted me to be. Now that could have been my manager. It could have been an HR person who was critical to my promotion. It could have even been my parents. And I think back to, I spent a lot of my career trying to please my dad and make him say the words, I'm proud of you. <laughs> and, and it didn't happen. You know, it didn't make a difference how much harder work I did as I was forcing that career. I still didn't get that external validation. And this is egoic behavior. When we want that external validation, we're not really being who we are. So the best of you looks more like this. If you get a sheet of paper 
you can do this exercise. Just just split that piece of paper down the middle and, and draw a line right down the middle. Uh, I, there's a there's a book here. I think it's called Best of You, and I forget the author's name, so I apologize. But this exercise is in that book where you can write down the best of you on the left hand side of that page. What what are you, who are you when you're at your best? And I know you're going to write down these things. You're going to write down caring, giving, you're helpful, you like to contribute, you want to make an impact. You always turn up on time, so you have punctuality. You don't, you actually abhor lateness. You put that on the right hand side of this page, you're going to come to that in a moment. But on the left hand side, all these good things about you, that's all it's going to see on the left hand side. On the right hand side, when we're not being ourselves and we are forcing life and our career, it's the lying, the cheating, the manipulation. And we deny it all, by the way. We live in denial. And denial is this great thing that allows us to keep our shame and our anger and our hurt depressed you know because we're still processing the emotions you know we think we're emotionally intelligent i can tell you i do not speak to a lot of emotionally intelligent people a lot of people have got emotional deregulation or dysregulation they're not in control of their emotions and they're very emotional about the relationships they have with their subordinates with their colleagues who are at the same level as them their peers and colleagues the most important group of people in your career and then the, the manager themselves they don't have healthy relationships and their emotions are out of control this is vital for you to understand that if you have any of that negativity going on, any of that resistance going on, you are past the point of being yourself. You're actually being somebody else. And I call it force. And to a certain extent, if you're not even doing the job because you're so frustrated and you're stuck and you're trapped, so you no longer start doing the tasks that you know you need to be doing, but you're avoiding them, you're actually self-sabotaging yourself. And this is why your career may be not only stalling to a flat line, but you actually see yourself declining. You know, the, the half-life of our knowledge declines over time, but our value declines if we're in a negative consciousness state or in a negative place thinking about everybody else gets reward, but I don't. Everybody else gets recognized, but I don't. That's because we're not focused on the courageous, willing, active person, the version of ourselves, the best of us, caring, giving, helpful, those are the things I said, when you're focused and you're doing those things, this is the best of you. So the flip side of that is what's really going on for most people is that that best on the word on that right hand side of the page, you can start writing some ideas as I'm talking to you now. I, I got my exercise, I wish I got it out. I did this years ago and go through this and I see the worst of me. Yeah, lying, cheating, manipulating, forcing. And that's not who the best of me is, but I know I go there. And if you want, in the book, I think they talk about actually giving these characters names, you know, who's the best of you. And I, I, I remember, um, it was like Sid the Snake or something was the name I gave to my negative self. And when you start to have that level of awareness about how you're behaving, how you're showing up, you know that growth and progress is predicated on exactly you being the very essence of who you are, the best of you. And I want to see the best of you, which is why I did this video. So that's the very first thing we're going to do. Second thing. Second thing you're going to do is really work on your relationships. You know, I mentioned a moment ago, the most important people in your career are your peer group. It's not your manager. It's not your team. They, yes, they are important. But let me give you the example. This has happened to me. I was in, a, I was in an organization where I, I was standing underneath the shady tree. So my manager was the, the vice president of the department, the division that I worked in. And I, I worked for him and there were a group of people who worked underneath. And so I really struggled with this manager. I had a really hard time. I felt it was slow moving. I felt like we were always playing safe. We didn't take any risks. And I was hungry. I'm, I'm the eternal optimist. I want to get things done. I want to get things launched. I want to make money. I want to grow the company. And yeah, to an extent, there was some egoic behavior there for me because I wanted that the power, the prestige of success and reward. And I wanted that. But I learned really quickly that when I was doing that force work, I wasn't getting the support from him. And then my subordinates, the same thing. So they could see it, but my subordinates, so my, my team members, if you like, the people who worked for me, I think they're all on board that, you know, I had a good relationship with them, but not on board necessarily with the way I was behaving to move up. And so they are not going to then voice to HR, voice to the VIPs that James would be a good candidate for promotion. And what I learned was this peer group is so vital that you have to have the support of the people you sit next to. And I, could, I won't name their names because we don't expose anybody on here. But let's just say there's John, Jennifer, Jackie, uh, Jocelyn, and we're all on the same tier. I made it my mission to make sure they knew that I would be a good candidate for the next level. And how did I do that? This is the number two reason that your career growth and career progress will take off. And that is build deeper and broader relationships 
with the people who are going to put in a good word for you, even when you don't ask. And so this is exactly what happened. So prior to my promotion from the ranks of director into the ranks of vice president, what was happening there was those peer group people were putting in good words, whispers. And that's all it would take for a VIP to hear when somebody would say, I think James could do this. But I never asked them to do that. I just made sure my relationship with them was rock solid. And I recommend you do that too with the people in your peer group because they're going to be your biggest promoters because they have one-to-ones with your manager. They have one-to-ones with the VIPs. They're the people who are going to put in good words with you and they'll do it unwittingly. They won't even know because if you've got such a good relationship and they trust you, they're going to do it for you. So that's number two in your progress and career growth, how you get this done. You've got to be yourself, number one, most important thing. You've got to build these relationships. And then finally, you have to attach yourself to create something of magnitude, create something that is bigger than you. And I, this was a big shock to me too. And I, you know, my story is I was working in product management most of my career. And so I always thought about what product can I launch? No, I had to think about what product can we launch? So when I took it from me to we, I started to build this huge network inside the organization. And this kind of happened in the last 10, 15 years where I, I knew all of the engineers and I knew all of the product people. And I would go and stand in offices and hallways and conversations, build relationships to create something bigger than the sum of the parts. So it meant that we, we had a true mission. You know, and then I was you know, built that reputation for finding businesses that were struggling and being able to turn them around because I was creating something of magnitude. We were pulling together projects and products that would be bigger if we did them all together. And so for you, it's trying to find that something. What, what might that problem be for you that you can solve? Just take a look at the things in your organizations that you do great. That's not where your problem is. Look at the things that you do good and look at the things that you suck at and take the good and the suck projects and products and processes and the things you're doing wrong and solve that problem. Create something of magnitude that is going to deliver much, much more. And by the way, this is going to get you infused. This is going to get you fired up and excited because as I've told you in many other videos, and I'll tell you in this one, most clients I work with, most of the people I work with and talk to down this camera are phenomenal problem solvers, phenomenal, critical, deep thinkers, great at strategic analytics, taking a look at all the data and coming up with a strategy that works, then putting together a detailed plan. I'm describing who you are, somebody I would love to talk to. You put that detailed plan together and then what you're really good at is implementing the plan with a group of individuals who have the capability and the skill set to actually execute. When it's going wrong, the people in that team aren't necessarily the right ones in that team, but you have the power to control everything that's going on inside of you and influence everything that's going on outside of you. So I want you to take this video. Those three things are the most important. If you need to rewind this and stick it on 2x speed, then do that. But this is what you need to know. Be yourself. Build deep, broad relationships, especially with your peer group and the people who are your colleagues who operate in a similar role. Now, they can be organization-wide. If you're in a large company, there might be a hundred of you. Go and find those people and start partnering up, collaborating, buddying up with those people, hearing tips and tricks, sharing information, helping each other out. And the cream rises to the top. And I've seen this happen in so many large organizations and some small and medium-sized ones too. And that last point that I want to leave you with is create something of magnitude. Hey, I really like that video on... The three things that are going to give you career progress and growth are going to move you the fastest. But I really want you to take a look at this next video. This is where you're going to know a little bit more. I'll meet you inside this. Just head over there. I'll see you inside the video. Just click right here.